All right, so we'll get this uh, webinar started. Uh, thank you to everybody who is uh, viewing this webinar, whether it be uh, live or um, or on demand. So <clears throat> the title of this discussion is Jehovah's Witnesses, the truth about the truth. Um, now, just by way of a quick introduction, uh, my name is Stefan CK. I used to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was born and raised in this organization. Uh, I left it in my teen years and then went back in my mid-20s and then left again in my mid-30s permanently. Um, the reason that I call this webinar The Truth About the Truth is because amongst Jehovah's Witnesses, they call their organization or their, their religion the truth and all other religions are considered false so you know they'll say about somebody else like oh they're in the truth or are you in the truth so that's what we're talking about like the tr the truth about what they call the truth so let's just start with the basics like now who are jehovah's witnesses what do they claim about themselves and then we'll kind of go from there a little bit further so Jehovah's Witnesses get their name from uh, a scripture in uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. And I've got it quoted up here at the top. You are my witnesses, declares Jehovah. And that's from the New World Translation 2013 edition. This is a uh, Bible. They call it a translation, but I'll call it a version that... Uh, is that was created by them um has a number of um uh, a number of changes and things that they've done to fit their doctrine but that's a whole other webinar in and of itself so some quick things about what they believe they do believe that the world as we know it and as we see it today is going to be ending soon and that it will be replaced with a global paradise, much like what you see pictured here. In fact, this uh, picture is from one of their publications. So this is the kind of future that they look forward to. Um, and <clears throat> it will only be accomplished by means of what they call God's kingdom. So like, you know, the Lord's prayer, let thy kingdom come. This is what they say that God's kingdom is going to bring about. So all the problems facing humanity, like wars, diseases, um, crime, poverty, you know, think about like everything bad that you see on the news, all of that they believe will be done away with and replaced by this. And ones that are deemed worthy of, of it will be granted eternal life by God or you know, Jehovah in this uh, paradise earth. So this is what they believe. Um, and that even dead ones that have passed away before, well, they believe that they're going to be brought back to life and be able to live in this, this new world forever, provided that uh, they are loyal to Jehovah God and all of what Jehovah's Witnesses believe that God's standards are. But in the meantime, what they believe is that we are living in critical times hard to deal with and that we are in the last days of what they call this system of things. So the commercial, political uh, entities and, and systems that you see in the world today are, they feel that they're on their last legs and that they're going to get replaced. Um, and in fact, all of the crime and war and diseases and everything that we see happening today that these are all signs of the end times. Now, this is a very common religious belief amongst many religions, but that these are signs of the end times that God's kingdom is about to take over and do away with everything. And so the preaching work that they do, perhaps you know them knocking on your doors or because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you've probably received letters with tracts enclosed with messages of hope about a brighter future and COVID over or the war in Ukraine, like how sad it is. Um, they do this preaching work to bring hope 
to people that are like really depressed. Um, you see a tweet here from Serena Williams that uh, she made in uh, the wake of like the school shooting in Texas, where she talks about that she keeps praying for the victims and people affected by these crimes, praying for God's kingdom to come, but then using that same expression, like the, the times that are hard to deal with. So this is common religious speak um, from many Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, which Serena Williams professes to be one. <clears throat> from an outward appearance, they present as a very friendly, if not perhaps quirky kind of people. Um, they're often shown, uh, they're often believed by many, like, oh, you know, if you want someone who's good and trustworthy, uh, you need to have a Jehovah's Witness in that, in that position. Like, they'll never steal, they're law-abiding. Uh, the way in which they try to present themselves is being a multicultural, worldwide, united brotherhood that worships God, imitates Jesus Christ, um, applies the Bible in everything in which they do, uh, staying neutral in political affairs, you'll never see them uh, voting or uh, like joining the military, like signing up for military service. Um, they claim that they try to work what is good towards everybody, uh, you know, to be the paragon of being, quote, good Christians, law abiding happy and unified like this picture again this is not a stock picture this is from their website jw.org this is the view of them that uh they want the public to see right so that's how they claim to be this is the image that they want to project but that is what i like to call the soft sell just like any kind of car salesman you know, they show you the outside of the car and everything. Look at how wonderful it is. But let's try just lifting the hood under the car a little bit. And let's just see. Let's just dig a little bit deeper, shall we? So let's go beyond the soft cell and see who are they really. And then again, this comes from someone who used to be inside that organization. So... This is like all other religions on earth. It's an entirely human organization. It is operated by a legal entity called the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, or depending upon where you are in the world, they might also have an alternate name, which is kind of like a shell corporation called the Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, they say that this is to conduct like all legal matters that are necessary, but... Uh, yeah, it is entirely human operated. It is led by eight men who call themselves the governing body. And they are all pictured here. Now, at various times throughout uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses history, the governing body has been different sizes, whether it be like eight now. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was just seven. They added an eighth one. In some decades past, it was even as large as 17. But in the end, these men, and it's always men, never any women, all claim to be God's chosen channel for overseeing what they call the earthly part of God's organization. Um, they, they do not claim to be directly inspired yet they do expect you to look to them as God's chosen servants. Uh, much like in the way that the Catholic Church has the Pope, um, you might think of these eight men as an eight-man Pope for uh, the Jehovah's Witness organization. But here's what they do not tell you directly about their beliefs when they're busy trying to sell you that Paradise Earth uh, narrative. They do believe that 99.9% .9 of the entire world population will die in a global Armageddon that is brought on by that kingdom that they are praying for, that same kingdom that Serena Williams' tweet 
said that she is praying for, and that the only way to salvation, to survive that global Armageddon, is to fully support the organization on earth, those eight men, basically, and everything that they say, and to obey them without question. It doesn't matter how absurd the doctrine or belief or direction may be. Even in a recent article, uh, they were reiterating that again, that when the end comes, no matter how crazy the direction from this governing body or what they call the faithful and discreet slave might be, you have to follow it without question. So, and this is, <clears throat> this is backed by just some excerpts from their, um, their propaganda, which is freely available to view on their website. This is not something that they completely hide, but again, when they're standing there uh, talking to you at the door or writing you the letter, or um, when you see them standing on the street corners, perhaps with some of those carts, this is really what they are believing in. They do not believe that anyone who is not a Jehovah's Witness is going to survive. Um, in some of their articles, in some of their literature, they have explicitly said exactly that. So the soft sell, here's what they're selling you at first, you know, that paradise earth. But if you do start to study with them, if you do start to um, uh, get involved and you become a Jehovah's Witness, the picture on the right here is what they are actually basically making you look forward to. The end of everything in a very fiery and violent kind of Armageddon with uh, no burials for people, just dead bodies everywhere. If you can think of the most apocalyptic things that you've seen in movies and television, like think Terminator 2 Judgment Day, uh, the dream that Sarah Connor has about, uh, you know, the nuclear bombs going off and everybody being burned alive. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe and are looking forward to for the whole world that is not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Just going back to that slide, right? They say here, you, you can see in the, in the excerpt at the top right, we hold out hope for many who are not serving Jehovah, including our unbelieving relatives, but at Armageddon, Jehovah, through Jesus, will make the final decision about their future. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and in their own words, now this is from uh, Anthony Morris III. He is a governing body member. And uh, in one of his speeches, talking about Armageddon, he said, until you smell human flesh burning from a helicopter... People that look like humans, like a hot dog on a grill, blackened and splitting open. I know what's coming at Armageddon. Uh, Anthony Morris used to be, uh, I guess he was uh, in the Vietnam War. And so, you know, he knows what, what this looks like. But in so many of his talks and speeches, uh, where he's supposed to be encouraging people and like building everyone up, uh, this is something that he especially focuses on. And Watchtower propaganda has especially been pushing this narrative even harder, uh, even at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> um, you had uh, Stephen Lett, who is another governing body member, uh, basically saying, undoubtedly, we're in the final part of the last part, the last day before the last days of this system. And that was uh, two years ago. So... Now, the other aspect of this is that Jehovah's Witnesses have been in the news. Um, sometimes you might see some favorable articles about them, uh, maybe like how fast they can build one of their kingdom halls, which is their places of worship. But there is a lot of news that they really do not want you to know about them. And even amongst their own members have gone to great lengths to prevent people from doing a Google search about Jehovah's Witnesses so that they do not get to see uh, this information. So here's some things that they really don't want you to know about them. One is that they have been uh, investigated and found guilty of child sexual abuse. 
So normally when you think about uh, child sex abuse, uh, the Catholic Church is probably one of the first things that comes to mind. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses are just as guilty and in many ways even worse than even the Catholic Church. Um, just a couple of examples here. In 2015, the government of Australia had a royal commission uh, to investigate multiple uh, institutions with their handling of child sexual abuse. So you had like the Boy Scouts, the Catholic Church, um, some equestrian clubs. Jehovah's Witnesses were also included in this investigation and they were case 29. And they were found to have like a secret database of known pedophiles amongst their ranks dating all the way back to the 1950s. There was a total of 1,006 known pedophiles to Watchtower, <clears throat> 1,800 victims that uh, reported having been molested or sexually abused uh, by members in the organization. And exactly zero of these were reported to the police by Watchtower in Australia or any of the local congregations. Um, appalling to say the very least. And that was just one highlight of the findings into Jehovah's Witnesses by the Australian government. Um, a bit more locally in uh, here in Canada, a few years ago, CTV News W5 did a full special called No Witnesses. And uh, they investigated uh, further into the handling of child sexual abuse in the Jehovah's Witness organization. And there was multiple cases where uh, the congregation elders refused to report and even at times knowingly placed children in danger uh, for being abused by elders in the local congregation when they knew that that, that elder was problematic. Um, there was also a special, you've heard of uh, Leah Remini's uh, television series that she does about uh, Scientology. Well, at the start of the third season, uh, she did a two-hour special with Jehovah's Witnesses and, uh, well, rather former members of Jehovah's Witnesses, and they recounted their own experiences dealing with uh, matters of, like shunning child sexual abuse and so on and needless to say it is a very difficult subject even for me to talk about but one that I feel is necessary and uh, unfortunately when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses they're unwilling to uh, pursue any kind of recourse or anything like that unless there are two witnesses to this crime and unfortunately they also refer to it more as a sin rather than a crime so yeah, it's problematic to say the very least. I mentioned shunning in that uh, in that Leah Remini special, and that is another case where uh, members that leave the organization are shunned, even by family members. I am one of those people. Um, my biological family unit, with the exception of just my brother, are all... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and have absolutely nothing to do with me and my brother because we are not Jehovah's Witnesses. And those that speak up like I am right now and letting you know about this, we are considered apostates and deserving of death. So um, this is the attitude that even uh, the two people that call themselves my parents have towards me. And you can see it in the news, like in, uh, in Calgary, there was a court case uh, that went all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada about Jehovah's Witnesses shunning. Unfortunately, they lied under oath and claimed that they don't shun family members, which I am living proof that that's not the case. Uh, in in um, on BBC News, again, like ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that are shunned by their families, and it's been described by many as psychological torture. But uh, Watchtower defends this, uh, at least inwardly, but then when pressed by the courts, um, they're willing to outright lie 
to protect their reputation, which is entirely unfortunate. So their attitude, like I said, towards former members like myself um, is a very hateful one. And um, in the words of Anthony Morris himself, remember, this is one of their uh, governing body members. Um, this is their attitude towards um, former members such as myself, as well as anyone who is not one of Jehovah's Witnesses and doesn't want to be. The apostates and the enemies of Jehovah would say, well, that's gruesome. That's despicable. You teach your people these things? No, God teaches his people these things. This is what he's foretelling. And frankly, for friends of Jehovah God, how reassuring that they're finally going to be gone. All these despicable enemies that have uh, just reproached Jehovah's name, destroyed, never, ever to live again. Now, it's not that we rejoice in someone's death, but when it comes to God's enemies, finally, they're out of the way, especially these despicable apostates who at one point had dedicated their life to God, and then uh, they joined forces with Satan, the devil, the chief apostate of, of all time. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really uh, room for interpretation, like, you, as you heard the words despicable apostates, that's, that's the label that he is applying to myself, to my brother, and to many others that have left and, and that speak up and let the world in general know about this. In um, Europe, in Brussels, Jehovah's Witnesses were given a 12,000 euro fine for incitement to hatred against ex-members. Uh, when it comes to Watchtower and their assets, that's a very small slap on the wrist, really. Um, in Canada, they're actually one of Canada's wealthiest charities, although they do not actually do any charity work. They just get to have that label because they're a religion. But you can see this is, this is the real view under the hood, like using that car salesman uh, analogy that I used before. This is their attitude towards former members. And for people that are not former members that maybe have never been Jehovah's Witnesses, well, they have a better attitude, but at the same time, um, they are looking forward to Armageddon and the death of everyone else who is not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So what can you do now that you, now that you know about this organization? And this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to their true colors. What can you do? Well, you can share this webinar uh, to raise awareness with others. Um, share this recording around, share this link, um, and, and let people know, like, just as a quick oversight or an overview, this is what Jehovah's Witnesses are all about. Um, when it comes towards Jehovah's Witnesses themselves, um, you know, when it comes to these uh, children that are in the school system, they need extra kindness and understanding. Um, you know, they're, they're those kids that are not allowed to celebrate holidays and not allowed to uh, do certain things like um, participate in the Pledge of Allegiance and whatnot. Uh, teachers, these kids are not having an easy time at home and are being taught that you are out to persecute them. So the best thing, I mean, always the best thing is love and kindness towards them. Uh, lastly, probably one of the most important things is to steer clear of this group's teachings and their literature. It is, uh, it's not an organization that you actually want to uh, get involved with, with their propaganda. It's, um, yeah, I mean, just thinking about that video that we just watched, yeah, it, it's not something that you, that you really want to be involved with. Um, yeah, avoid it. <laughs> uh, just a quote that really uh, comes to mind here. Um, the only business in the world bigger than gambling is religion, but gambling is not nearly so corrupt. 
In the case of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and Watchtower, this is so absolutely true. Um, they are they are one way on the outside, a completely different way on the inside, and uh, there's a lot of corruption and darkness <laughs> that uh, hides under the surface. And I know that that makes me sound a little bit like an alarmist, but um, unfortunately, it's true uh, in, in the case of this group. So some further resources, uh, if you're, if you're interested to learn a bit more, um, avoidjw.org is a really good one. Uh, jwfacts.com. Uh, again, there's a lot of information on those websites that, uh, kind of shows you a number of things that, uh, Watchtower and Jehovah's Witnesses in general do not want you to be aware of. Um, they will always claim that it is apostate literature and apostate lies, but uh, believe me, it's not. Um, you can also read up the entire uh, report from the Australian Royal Commission. Uh, the website address is on there. It's a little bit of a longer one. Um, in fact, on YouTube, if you look up the Australian Royal Commission Jehovah's Witnesses, you can actually watch recordings of the entire uh, deposition of the elders and various experts and whatnot that were uh, asked to testify, including uh, footage from one of the governing body members um, who, when asked directly, do you believe that you're God's channel, he lied to them and said, well, I think that would be presumptuous. But <laughs> if we just go back and look again, uh, remember that their own literature shows that they actually do believe that, yes, he is one of the eight that believes that they are God's chosen channel. And uh, in all of their literature, they will always use the expression uh, true Christians to describe themselves. Um, in fact, you even see, <clears throat> where is it? Yes, uh, they talk about false religion being gone, commercial and political system, etc. So, I mean, like most religions, they always look at the other religions and say like, well, that's wrong, that's false. Well, for Watchtower, they believe that theirs is literally the only correct one and that all others will be destroyed. Uh, if you want to hear a bit more from me, I do have a YouTube channel called XJW Silent No More. Um, there's a lot of content on there. There's a lot of content on YouTube in general uh, by many um, former Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, my voice is just one small one amongst a huge crowd of witnesses. Uh, you can also uh, check out the XJW Reddit, uh, which is at slash r slash XJW. Um, there you'll get to uh, interact with other, other members. You can ask questions, you can read their stories. Um, there's discussions on there about like some of the latest, uh, happenings amongst the organization that again, Watchtower does not want to talk about on their website. Um, and of course, Google, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's great. Um, I would, <laughs> If you want to know a bit about what they believe from their own mouth rather than just this uh, webinar, you can go to their website at jw.org, but I always advise caution on there because it is entirely one-sided and uh, aims to portray themselves in the best light possible. Uh, there are like, like any kind of organization that has some embarrassing dark secrets, they don't want to they don't want you to know about it. So uh, that is the end of my presentation. I want to say thank you to all of you for listening.